this is going to be the project that we're going to start on next. It is a mid-century three-piece bedroom set. It has the chest, dresser, and a single nightstand and a mirror. Now, I purchased this off Facebook Marketplace. It was very inexpensive, but it's going to require quite a bit of labor. This situation has to be stripped down. Hi, I'm Rhea. And with my husband, Alex, we started Art Furniture Woodwork. I've been flipping furniture since I was 16 years old. Join us on our journey and we'll learn some refinishing techniques and painting techniques for all types of furniture. You can see how the paint job was um, not, not done with care. It's gonna require some elbow grease. I have put on my chemical stripper and we're just gonna have to start stripping this down. It's gonna get gooey, so buckle up. It would have been kind of a white with gray graining through it, but as time goes on, that varnish that they've put on yellows. And that's why a lot of people painted these pieces. So I'm gonna show you an easier way than stripping to get that varnish part off. Um, to get the paint off, stripper is fine. And you could keep going with the stripper, but you're gonna use a lot of it. And strippers running, 55, $52 to $55 a gallon right now. So it's not exactly economical to keep going with stripper and keep stripping down little layers of that varnish. So I'm gonna show you a way to get it off that's a little bit quicker and not quite as expensive. If you just take your acetone and your steel wool and put it on there, let it sit for a few minutes, it'll start breaking down that that varnish that they've put on and start stripping it back um, now the person who i bought this set from had started stripping down the nightstand already and unfortunately i think they used a sander on the nightstand drawer and burnt through the veneer a little bit so we're gonna see what we can do about keeping this wood but I'm not really sure how that one's gonna work but we'll see what we can do with it and this is just um, 4 aught steel wool and acetone and if I just keep just kind of rubbing over this it's just releasing that varnish um, and then just wiping it off and then we'll go back and we'll clean that up. Now that we have all of these stripped down and we've got all of the purple paint off the fronts and the tops and the sides of those dressers, what we're gonna do is we are going to sand. And um, on the fronts of these pieces, I always recommend that you hand sand if possible. Um, the veneer on any mid-century piece is it's pretty, but it's very, very thin. And you will burn through that veneer so quick with a sander. And before you know it, you've got big splotches. So we're gonna hand sand this. And um, I don't think these are gonna require a great deal of sanding because we did a lot of that with the 4 aught steel wool when we were removing all of that paint. So let's get started.
What I've got on here is a 220 grit on the drawer fronts just to be sure that we don't put any scratches in them. Um, and when we do the sides of the drawers to get off any paint that might be on the sides, then we'll use a 100 grit on that. We're still cleaning this piece up. I've sanded out a lot of the drips and brush strokes of purple paint out of the inside because I think it just looks, it looks more professional. It looks a better job when you take away all those, all that you can of that. You'll never get all of it, but you can get a great deal of it. Um, <clears throat> With my detail scrapers and the sander, unfortunately, my default sander, it, it died. I'm having to use Alex's um, Metabo out of his shop till we replace mine and unfortunately what I have found and this might be something that could be beneficial to some of you I suppose if you were working in a shop and you're always sanding this way this sander would be fine except I found that the bag once the air goes into it, the bag wants to pop off. I found with this. Um, also, if you want to get it into some tight spaces, the, the height of this does not allow for that. I would not want to purchase this sander for myself, but I'm going to get on with trying to clean up just a bit more. Every time I look, I find more drips and little, little bits of purple here and there. I'm going to go through and clean up the back of this. I mean, that's just, that's unacceptable. And I've already stripped this, so you can just imagine what it was before I even stripped it. I mean, come on. This is why people who who respect furniture hate people who paint furniture because they think that when you're going to paint furniture that this is what you're doing to it and that's not what the majority of furniture painters do um so you know if you're going to paint a piece tape it off make it look pretty you know and just watch a couple videos from from different people and you'll you'll find your style and see what makes a piece look done professionally versus this okay that made it look a bit better um, not every bit of it's off but that's as far as I'm gonna go with it and what I have here is just a rag with some mineral spirits on it and wiping the surface gives you an idea of what it would look like if we just um, did a shellac finish on it and left it natural wood which it never was before this has never been natural wood it's not a very pretty wood but that is what it would look like if we just shellac the top and i'll get a closer view for you so you can see what i'm not very pleased with here you can see where when the original finish went on we've got some white in the fibers of that wood and right here there's a big gouge taken out that's almost through this really thin veneer the sides here 
you can see where they've put the veneer pieces together. Um, and also we've got that white um, going through the, the fibers of the wood. Now the upside is, is that all of the purple is off or as much as can reasonably be expected. There'll always be little tiny specks in grooves and so forth, but we've done pretty good at getting the purple off. The veneer is in good shape. Um, there was just a couple of little repairs, um, little glue downs, one here where a little piece was flaked. Um, and one on the corner at the bottom as well. I'm gonna have to assess what I'm gonna do with this. I had hoped that it would look really pretty and be a nice, a nice shade of mahogany, but it's not. I think what we're gonna do is we are gonna seal these. And the way I'm gonna do that is, got my two pound cut of shellac, mixed up the crystals and so we are just going to get our shellac and our dauber ball and we're going to seal this wood because when i go to stain it i don't want the stain to um, penetrate those wood fibers really deep and then end up just almost with a very dark stain. Um, I want them darker than they are, but I don't know how dark. This is just going to give me just a little bit more control. So I'm just going to put a seal coat on everything and then go from there. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this Minwax Red Mahogany stain and I'm just going to wipe it on. <clears throat> I've just got a t-shirt and cut it up. Just a nice lint-free Just a nice lint-free um, rag is all you really need. And I'm just going to wipe it on. And then take off the excess. Making sure that I leave no, no streaks behind. Going to be sure and get those edges. We want it to look nice and professional. So let's get those edges. Okay, so we've got this piece finished. Run over it with a um, four aught steel wool and the finish just doesn't look very good to me. I'm not very happy with it. So I'm gonna go back and restain this but with a different color and with a different product. I'm gonna use some Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain um, in Georgian Cherry and see if that helps. I just feel like there's some uneven spots. There's a lot of wood grain in this piece that was never meant to be seen. Um, different types of pores, so the stain is going to absorb different. So we're going to we're going to see what we can do to make this piece look cohesive. Okay, I'm just using a just a regular rag to put this on. You can put it on with a t-shirt. It's quite forgiving. It's a very nice stain to use, especially if it's, if you're not very comfortable using stain. I'm not really liking the way this is going on with this, so we're gonna change applicators. Dixie Bell makes some little applicators that look like this. These are actually from Amazon, but um, Dixie Bells look very similar to this. Um, like I say, I order mine off Amazon. And I cut them in half because I in half both ways, round wise and lengthwise. So I just feel like it fits my hand a bit better. I think this color will warm this piece a bit. It felt 
kind of flat. When I say that the Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain is forgiving, I mean it is forgiving. You can, you can put it on so, so easily and then just wipe back over it. We're basically just using this, um, this t-shirt just to go through and smooth everything out. Make sure we've got a nice even color here. And it's looking pretty good, I like this. That color is just really nice, nice and warm. Really gives this piece more depth, I think. Now, if we decide later that we want more color, you can always go back over Dixie Belle, even after it's dry, it's not a problem. I think we're going to be adding some paint to this piece anyway, so, but I'm just staining everything and then I can go back and paint over just by giving it a little bit of a scuff. And we're going to be going back and taking most of this off with our little cotton t-shirt. Now Dixie Belle is an oil base, so it will take some time to dry. So keep that in mind that you're probably looking at 72 hours and that's if your conditions are ideal about 70 degrees in your work area, low humidity, which um, right now in the winter is quite difficult. And by the state of my hair today, you can tell that it's pouring rain outside. So that's adding to humidity. And um, so we'll just have to see what the dry time is going to be on this and it'll just take as long as it takes. So. Um, we'll see when this video goes out. Okay, we are back in the shop and we've put the stain on. I put the drawers in to see if they match. One did not. Um, actually two did not because I forgot a drawer totally. I forgot to stain it all together. This is the one that I... I forgot to wipe the stain back off of it, so I'm having to go through now and remove some of that stain, probably all of that stain, and restain it with this other one. And then they should all match consistently. And then we'll go through with a 4 aught steel wool, and we're going to make sure that there's no nibs or dust or anything on here. And um, then we're going to add some color. I know there are a lot of people that just died right now when I said I'm going to put some paint on this, but I think it needs a bit of an update. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give it just, just a hint of an update. Not a major update, just a little bit. When you're doing a long piece like this and you think that you see streaks or maybe this side is darker and you want to kind of lighten that up but not all the way down, be sure that when you get to the end of that, you lift. So you want to wipe and lift. Otherwise, when you just wipe and stop, you're going to end up leaving kind of a, a smear mark or a puddle. Um, so be sure that you wipe and lift. Wipe and lift. Unless you're going all the way to the other end, be sure that you start lightening up and lifting halfway through your stroke there. And that will help you to to not end up with splotches halfway down your piece. Um, I know that that's what some people find hard. They find it hard to work with gel stains on big pieces because of that. And that's one thing that you can do to help alleviate that. So you're just gonna wipe and lift. 
because when you when you've got it in your head that you're going to be lifting you'll automatically start lightening up that stroke as you get closer to where you're going to lift off kind of like an airplane taking off so even if it's only a short bit to get these edges because the the wood on these pieces were never meant to be seen. I wouldn't say that the wood grain is very pretty. Um, remember, these were painted from factory, so it was never meant to be seen uncovered. So they're not very pretty pieces of wood, but um, I'm trying to add in a little bit of a little bit of graining with the stain to give it some of those variations in color that you would see in in wood um, rather than just a flat color all the way across so that's why i'm not going all the way to the end with this i'm just i mean i have but then i go back and kind of add in some highlights and lowlights Got a little bit on the this drawer that just seems just slightly lighter but not a great deal so I'm just taking my um, used rag here that I was doing the top with and just kind of just kind of feathering in some color in these to make sure that everything matches really nicely. I think, I think we're about there. Yeah, looking real good now. All right, so we'll need this to dry at least 24 hours, possibly more. On each of the top drawers of these pieces, on the right hand, left hand side, it has these little decorative moldings. And we took them off when we were stripping all of that purple paint. And I'm gonna tell you, this piece, this piece is doing my head in. I'll never ever be able to sell it and, and make the money per hour out of it that I've put into it. But sometimes you're just so far in, there's nothing to do but keep going. So. We are gonna make it to the end of this project. I swear it one day I'm gonna finish it. But right now, um, I'm gonna use these to help bring in some more updated look to this piece. So let's get started with that. Now what I've done is I've sanded them down. Of course I have stripped them, put a coat of shellac on them in case anybody really wants to go back, strip this piece down and take the color off. They can very easily. So here I've got some black chalk paint. I do not see these pieces bleeding through, so I am not that concerned about a, um, they won't bleed through because we put shellac on them, but we don't really need a primer because they've got some, they've got something to grip to. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna bond just fine. I'm not really concerned there. And I've just got a deep, deep black. Um, and we are gonna just put some black on this piece. This piece is screaming to me for a more masculine feel. So we're gonna give it that masculine feel with just adding some black. Just doing nice thin coats. That way, once we sand down, we'll have a nice smooth finish. We are going to paint this part black, this part black, and this part black. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to give this a bit of a scuff just to be sure that we've got something for our paint to grip on. Now I wasn't sure what I was gonna do to this piece when I stained it, so I stained more than I needed to, but that's okay. All right, 
We've got a chalk paint, so no primer needed. And I think this will be fine without one. We'll do two coats of this, just like we did with the little um, edge pieces that go here on the drawers. Same, same color. So I think this is going to look quite, quite modernized, up to date. Not your grandparents' mid-century furniture. Now we'll refine this when we go through and do the next coat, but we're also going to do these edges here. And this is one reason I'm using this nice small brush is to be able to get those edges without having to tape it all the way down. I mean, I don't need to tape it if I can do it this way. Now, the way to do this without getting paint where you don't want it, it's like I don't want it on this surface. So what I do is I take my paintbrush and I start at the bottom and kind of run it up. That way I'm always going up so that my bristles don't ever go, go across this section. They're just kind of going up. You can see that. All right, for the hardware on this piece, what I've done is I have cleaned them with um, water and vinegar and boiled it for a half hour, uh, one cup to one cup. And then I've primed them with a metal primer. And now we're going to spray them gold. I looked for some other hardware, but couldn't find anything that I thought looked any more mid-century than this for a reasonable price and since we know that we are already i'm um, gonna be a bit shy on this one as far as getting the money out of it that we've got in it we're just going to use the same hardware we're just going to change the look of it so i've got my gold spray paint i've already sprayed one side so now I've got them turned over, I'm going to spray the other. I'm just using a Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Gold um, in a metallic finish. And I've used this before and it does quite well. Just be sure that your hardware is cleaned and primed. So while the handles were drying, we went ahead and top coated the piece with three coats of general finishes high performance top coat. So this is the wreck that was before. And now we have this gorgeous, rich, absolutely sleek look. I am loving the way the handles came out. They look just great with this piece now. The richness of the color, it's just got so much depth to it. There are some things that I wished would have been different. Um, as you can see, the nightstand. At some point, whomever had tried to strip it, they've made some marks, but I think it still looks fantastic. Goes perfectly with this piece. And because of those imperfections, we decided to go with a flat top coat. A flat top coat will show less imperfections than anything that's gloss, so keep that in mind. If you've got imperfections, keep it flat. It'll help to not make them so noticeable. 
few little marks didn't come out in the top of the dresser, but I think with a piece with age, there is a trade-off between whether you sand too much and risk go going through the veneers on mid-century pieces or whether you just know that it's just going to have to be part of the character of the piece, just like an antique will never be perfection. Mid-century, they're getting to the point where it's hard to find one that's absolutely pristine condition. I think it's going to make a nice addition to anyone's home. If you found this video helpful, please remember hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Please tell your friends. We need more subscribers, so hit that button. I know the photos of the sander looks like it blew up. It did not. I had taken it apart to see if Alex could fix it, but as we all know, we had to say goodbye to it. <laughs>